Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Tiana here once again, and I am from the likes of the Maxi Toys videos here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, let's just say, the shortest playthrough we're going to be doing. That is the fact that we are tackling through a fan-made Kirby game of all things. That's what appears to be Kirby's Dreamland Advance, which is basically, it's like a ROM hack of the forms of, let's just say, think of like Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, but usually it's replaced by Kirby's Dreamland Advance. To make it more accurately though, like a Game Boy Advance remake of Kirby's Dreamland since in 1992. So as a result though, I can't wait to be able to give this game a try, because after all, technically we've already did the Let's, pl let's Play of uh, Kirby's Dreamland since back in 2018. So as a result though, we can figure him was able to tackle for this fan-made remake during the forms of the 30th anniversary of the release of the original game back on the Game Boy days. So after all though, as you can tell, I'm going to be able to actually select in the keyboard controls for this because, well, despite I was originally going to be using my controller, but then I found out that uh, I think keyboard might be the quickest thing to do for my part. So, anyway, so we got ourselves the new game as well as options. Now, I've sort of practiced this game before, once before I able to actually start recording this, and overall, I'm sort of getting used to it with all that controls and the setup and everything. Well, originally though, I was gonna set the game in full screen mode, but it might not likely gonna happen. So, anyways, let's get to it with uh, Kirby Streamland Advance, for as a fan-made remake of the forms of Kirby Streamland originally for the Game Boy. Now, as you can tell from the sprites, especially noticeable with the aesthetics about the game, you know, as I said before, it's kind of like similar to the forms of Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland for the Game Boy Advance, because usually Nightmare in Dreamland is basically the remake of Kirby's Adventure originally came out on the NES. And as a result though, because you see those familiar uh, huts alongside with the life's counter, and even your health meter as well, so it's usually heavily borrowed from Nightmare in Dreamland. And on top of that, with all these uh, enemy sprites, alongside with those boss sprites here and there too, and as a result though, it just makes things a lot more nicer to look at. Well, usually relatively speaking though, because again, this is actually my first time experiencing this remake, for made by certain fans alike. So as a result though, I'm very curious to s just to see how this plays out to be. And so far, no uh, frame rate drops here and there, despite uh, my capture footage just seems to able to actually go a little bit of a weird uh, frames per second going on around here, just like it falls about it doesn't on any other Game Boy games up to this point in time. But in, at the end of the day though, I'm sort of able to actually just use this setup or something. So, anywho though, so a few things I want to explain, and that is the fact that today's day is of course the uh, the 18th of December today, in this case in 2022 today. Next week folks, it's going to be the entire Christmas day is going to be on the horizon, according to the forms of this uploading schedule time. And on top of all that stuff though, originally, I was going to go back onto the forms of WarriorWare Touched, but I'll be ready to get back into that game at some point and during tomorrow, alongside with the next day as well, specifically Wednesday in some cases though, because after all, that's uh, since that Sonic has recently finished up with not only Super Metroid, but also a redo let's play of The Legend of Zelda on the NES, and so far, for those two let's plays combined, well, uh, for Super Metroid, doesn't seem to be able to have that much views, but as far as The Legend of Zelda is concerned, it might have the exact same impact as the forms of how it does it since during the likes of in Super Metroid let's play, but... At least the actual quality itself looks a bit more nicer this time around, so as a result, we very appreciate about doing these kind of stuff from the likes of, uh, compared to the forms of the first time around, but I digress. So as far as the forms of Kirby's Dreamland Advance is concerned, obviously you go for the exactly the same levels as the forms of how it does in the original version, and you're able to actually fight against the exact same bosses as from before, like, you're still able to actually face off against with, uh, Wispy Woods, uh, Lolo, and La La La, and also say applies with that, uh, Kurumba, I think that's what it says anyway. Mind you, it's been ages since I actually last played, uh, Kirby's Dream Land on the Game Boy, because, let me tell you, I am very excited to able to actually realize that Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is definitely coming to the Nintendo Switch, and I'm very excited about that particular game. So not only that I can able to actually experience the game again, 
but this time I can play the game on the go, rather than stuck indoors for the sake of likely refuse to turn off the game or something like that. Unlike the original version, alongside with the forms of the Wii U downloadable version. So in some cases though, it is so nice to able to let uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland gives a second chance. And this time around though, you can play the game on the go, which I think, personally speaking, is awesome. For, at least in my opinion. And as a result though, we can definitely cannot wait until whatever we dive into that game uh, again, but except the fact that this time on the Nintendo Switch, as to be expected, so... Also, I just realized is the fact that the actual music in the background is actually heavily borrowed from Kirby Superstar. Or to be more specifically though, Kirby Superstar Ultra. To be more specifically, whenever you try to fight against in one of those final bosses in the Great Cave Offensive. So, that might be seems a little bit more weird to able to have that music on here, so... But I digress. So, um... But the only noticeable differences between the forms of in a fan-made remake as opposed to the official, uh original version of the game of Kirby's Dream Land is that once you complete the game once, then I believe you get yourselves a different reward this time, which I'm sure that most people already know what to expect what this is going to be happening, but either way though, we'll find out until whatever we're able to like, um, once we complete the game as, as it normally attempted, so... Although, if you managed able to start the game off, that you do realize that we somehow managed to stumble across the 25th anniversary of Kirby logo, which I'm pretty sure this particular remake came out during the forms of in 2017, so it's been like roughly five years ago now. So because of that though, gee, I can't believe time flies all of a sudden, so... Alright, so here we go with uh, Lo 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 and La La La, which basically the boss fight itself plays out exactly the same as before as in the original version, except certain sprites are actually a lot more detailed around here, which I fully appreciate it. And on top of that, this game is now in full color as opposed to strictly black and white on the original Game Boy. So I do appreciate about that specific stuff as far as, you know what I mean, before that, you know remakes are concerned for able to improve upon certain things so anyways now let's move on to stage three which appears to be float islands so basically though we're able to do a lot of swimming involved but uh exponentially speaking though oh and on top of that as well is the fact that we've only got about i would say uh 14 days to go until we move on to 2023 so because of that though everything else goes a lot more quicker as we expected oh and on top of that speaking of kirby's adventure though is the fact that until next year and um, wow that's actually really loud <laughs> I, I honestly have no words to say, especially considering how the fact that I was trying to adjust the volume, but uh, I just want to able to make things a little bit more balanced with sound mixing. So I do apologize for that, folks, but I digress. So, um, anywho, though. Yeah, speaking of Kirby's Adventure, though, is that until next year, that game is going to be 30 years old until next year. So, yeah, I can't believe time flies, you know? Alongside with probably Kirby's Pinball Land, for the Game Boy. Well, mind you, I haven't really uh, played that game uh, yet, or even obtained a game yet, but I'm very curious to I'm also able to try this out on my own time for a bit. So just to ensure that I'm also able to probably show that game off until whatever I do the entire uh, Kirby Games marathon of any sort. Well, at least we've already technically do such another game since in 2018, all the way up to, you know, 2022 with the most recent installment, which appears to be, of course, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. But I'm very happy about the fact that, well, Kirby and the Forgotten Land did manage to receive the reward for the Game of the Year award this year, which appears to be on the best family games, which, yeah, I'm very happy for you, um, Kirby, because, you know, you're the, uh, the most adorable thing in the world, and especially noticeable, you're my all-time favorite franchises as well, especially considering how the fact that it's a good thing I managed able to obtain, well, almost every single games, but mind you, there are a couple of, uh, games exceptions though, like, for example, there's a game on an e-reader, alongside with certain cancellation games, and on top of that, so much more I can think about, but, uh, either way, Let's go and use the star, uh, well, let's just say the warp star, until, is that supposed to be, like, a, exactly the same, uh, boss, as in, well, I definitely heard about that reference there, it could be something related to Kirby Superstar, like, basically, we somehow come across into that whale boss, but somehow, ah, uh, never mind. 
So here we go with this next boss right here. So in some cases, though, we do need to utilize this particular special uh, item that you can able to spit projectiles at him. So just to ensure about the fact that it deals so much damage. So... But yeah, I was originally going to be able to try to say something else for this matter though. Although apart from the fact that for one thing in mind, that uh, relatively speaking, Bandai Namco just somehow announced for something. And that is the fact that, you know there's a game called uh, Digimon Survive? Basically, it's been sold for about 500... Um, thousand copies. So, yeah, it seems pretty good though, especially noticeable considering how the fact that, well, 500,000 copies might actually be pretty swell as far as, usually as far as this is concerned. Well, mind you, that uh, it's been donkey's years since I've known about Digimon, apart from the fact that with the actual movie theatrical release, but either way though, that's saying something, so... And of course, since this is the remake of the forms that have been the first Kirby game to exist, this means about the fact that there's no way we can able to obtain copy abilities, apart from the fact that you do occasionally get uh, a couple of useful items, like for instance that we've already come across into a microphone, which acts like a screen nuke, and on top of that, uh, you know with the forms of that particular spicy curry, as we've already stumbled across into, on the float islands, that basically you can just essentially just breathe fire, and then potentially you would be able to get rid of enemies and such. And on top of that, it only lasts for, for about a few seconds notice, so... And in fact that that particular uh, spicy curry will be brought back until Super Smash Bros. Brawl was actually introduced or reintroduced that particular item, and so applies to the forms of the future games as well. For the sake of the Super Smash Bros. games, basically. So, uh, anywho, though. So, aside from all that stuff, though, I suppose I should probably also mention about this as well, I guess? Now, it's the fact that, well, relatively speaking, that, uh, there was actually a new event that did recently came up for the sake of the forms of Sonic Forces Speed Battle. Despite the fact that I no longer have that game anymore, just because I feel like the game is a bit rep repetitive, in my honest opinion. And on top of all that stuff, though, it's just about the fact that I was literally managed to able to realize it's just about the fact that I just couldn't seem to able to win certain matches anymore. And on top of that, I just basically give up on it. But basically, there's the event called the Forms of the Sonic Prime event. So in some cases, though, we're about to be getting another alteration. Well, mind you, it will eventually begin until specifically by the end of uh, this month, or should I say by the end of this year, all the way up to the beginning of 2023. Specifically, it starts the event until uh, the 28th of December for this year, and then it ends off until January uh, 10th of 2023. And uh, they only contain two characters at the moment, which is obviously based off from Sonic Prime, of course. And that's what it appears to be by the forms of, well, we have Tails 9, which is something more accurately is kind of like similar to the forms of Dr. Octavius from the likes of the forms of certain Spider-Man films, specifically Spider-Man 2 and recently No Way Home. So, in some cases though, I have no idea why it somehow managed able to mention something like that, but either way though, that's just me anyway. And of course there's another character is introduced in Sonic Prime, which appears to be uh, Rusty Rose, but uh, either way though, I'm actually very curious to see how that's going to be represented with, and I'm pretty sure they might actually do the same thing for the sake of Sonic Dash as well, but I shall see what happens in due time though, especially considering how the fact that it's been very long while for me though to get back into this sort of thing for able to actually record certain stuff. Well, because mind you about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, I just really was able to get, you know, certain uploading schedules done before 2023 is about to be begun, and exponentially we're able to make it happen. So, anyways, let's grab the maximum tomato, and an extra one up. Seriously, it's so easy to get extra lives in this remake, I just found out. Well, usually because, overall, I think the controls in this game looks a lot more improvement over the likes of how it does it in the original version, in my opinion. Like, for one thing, you can now able to actually just to able to run fast, like you can just simply uh, double tapping the uh, left or right uh, arrow keys, and on top of that, you can now able to actually use the uh, the jump button if you manage to able to try to fly or hover for a bit. And as a result, this is a much more of a definitive version of uh, Kirby's Dreamland in my opinion. Even though it's kind of a shame about the fact that, well, technically, for uh, Kirby's uh, Superstar, that basically though, you can technically still experience uh, a remake 
type of the forms of Kirby Streamland, and that's what appears to be Spring Grace. Well, despite the fact that they're only missing one level, which appears to be Castle Low Low Low, but that's pretty much about it, basically. And also they cut out one of those boss fights, which appears to be body forms of, you know, taking place in the skies above. So, either way, let's move on to the final stage in Kirby's Dreamland Advance. That's what appears to be Mount DDD, where, as to be expected, King DDD is responsible for all this entire uh, mess of this entire, well, Dreamland itself. Although, we still need able to have a rematch against with certain bosses again, before we move on to the final boss in the game, which is just none other than King DDD himself. And this time, I'm actually going to be going in these bosses in the reverse order, because I just feel like it. Thus, it'll make things a little bit more interesting for able to go from the reverse order, as opposed to the usual uh, uh, following order from the beginning to the very end. So in some cases now, let's go in and take on Krago for uh, the second time for this playthrough. So, uh, yeah, overall, I just felt like that about the fact that I'm just very excited able to see about the fact that what's going to be up next for Kirby. But either way, though, and also very, very impressive how this remake is going to turn out to be. Well, usually, relatively speaking, it's been a very long time since I actually had last played you know, Kirby's Dreamland since on the Game Boy, thanks to forms of the Virtual Console uh, 3DS release, and uh, also I managed able to complete the game on my own time on the original Game Boy cartridge version back in the forms of in, uh, um, I would say during the lockdown or something, well mind you, it has been a very few days since I actually known of this kind of stuff, so there goes Krako, and now we move on to, uh, well, the boss fight from the likes of Float Islands, so... That's to be expected at that point, so... Anyway, so, um, I suppose another thing I should probably also mention about this as well, is the fact that, speaking of the forms of WarriorWare Touch, though, is the fact that, well, as far as I can usually gather by that point, whenever I've done one of those videos, and I get the horrible feeling I might as well come across into the first step, so... Well, thankfully, though, it doesn't seem that much punishing this time around, though, so it's just about the fact the matter is, though, I wasn't paying attention to, like, you know, certain enemies I somehow accidentally touched by, and, of course, I got shot by the cannon, so... Whoops. But luckily, we've got the checkpoint, so, yeah, if you managed able to get into the next room, that counts as the checkpoint, so... Let's try this again, shall we? So, um... Anyway, um, I suppose I should probably mention about this in regards to the forms of WarriorWare Touch, as far as I've mentioned this briefly, that, um, what if I do manage to be able to completely done with one of those videos, all about, uh, one of those, uh, things I want to do next, am I able to actually decide to able to play the game on my own time for a bit? And that's the reason why about the fact that, well, again, I'll explain more details as soon as I'm able to go back into... Uh, Warrior went touched until tomorrow, so just in case that we can able to actually finally catch up on certain things rather than just Well, you know what I mean after the events of uh, let's just say a couple of delays for certain uh, let's play parts specifically uh, K Klonoa Moonlight Museum, but I'm pretty sure that uh, we haven't exactly done uh, that much uh, Well, we've already did done one of those Klonoa let's plays in uh, this year so far which appears to be a Klonoa 2 Dream Champ Tournament. And also I just realized it's the fact that we haven't done a single Pac-Man game for the sake of the forms of this year in 2022. Like originally we were expecting to be able to do uh, Miss Pac-Man uh, Maze Madness. But unfortunately though that particular Let's Play will be delayed. So because obviously we got a lot of stuff to catch up on. So anyway so that takes care of uh, Lo 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 and La La La. And now we're going to be taking on Wispy Woods for the second and the final time for this particular playthrough. Well, it wasn't until whenever we get around onto Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe that exponentially we we're able to refight against with Wispy Woods again, except this time on the Nintendo Switch. And also that, well, you know what I'm saying. But I'm very curious though, is the fact that until when 2023 rolls, uh, rolls around, that when uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, I was really hoping that that particular game will sold well, or if not, because of the forms of everyone else seems to already got the Wii version of the game. But honestly, I don't care, because I honestly do enjoy uh, both the Wii version, and I'm really looking forward to the Switch remake, you know? 
And sure enough, the door opens as in a pretty cool animation right there. But anyways, let's get into it with the... Oh, oh, hello. And I somehow died because I was not expecting with that cameo appearance. With not only with Mario and Peach, but also Toad. And something tells me this is almost inspired by Kirby Superstar Ultra because of all that... You know, visual sprites and all that stuff. Oh, we also also have Luigi, Wario, and uh, Toad again. So, yeah, this seems uh, pretty cool to be able to see those characters again. Except this time it's been made by a fan-made game. And, of course, we don't have two-player supports with us anymore. So, it's just all about a single-player experience. And, generally, King DDD is without doubt is the hardest boss fight in the game. Clearly because about the fact that, well, to make things a bit easier at this time, it's the fact that we have a lot more room to able to, like, try to dodge King DDD. And on top of that, it's the fact that we have much more fluid controls this time, as opposed to this old school archaic uh, limitations from the Game Boy original. So, yeah, it seems pretty cool though. Uh, okay. Wait, at the very least though. Ah, oh, dang it, I just got cornered. Oh well, no big deal, but at least he's almost down anyway, so, uh, just gonna do this little massive jump. Oh god, okay. Ah, oh, I didn't pick it up in time for that star projectile. So yeah, uh, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day that, uh, in regards to the forms of Kirby related, are you guys are still looking forward to able to, like, pre-ordering uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe on the Switch, because I sure as I am. Especially, I'm gonna be picking up the physical version rather than digital version, because I'm not a big fan of how, uh, digital games managed to able to took out a lot of gigabytes for the sake of the Nintendo Switch system. So as a result, though, that's the reason why I'm actually gonna be suggesting the, uh, the physical form, because I just love the front covers, and on top of that, I just love to see the artwork inside the actual uh, box arts, and on top of that, I really love the actual uh, the cover art for the game cards itself. But there we go, we've completed Kirby's Dreamland Advance, and for my um, final thoughts about this particular fan-made remake, uh, it's been made by quite a lot of people, as you can tell from that particular uh, credit sequence. I will say, I was very impressed with how this remake turns out. Like, it certainly is a lot more detailed, and also a lot of fun to play, and also they borrowed the exactly the same music from something else, as well as certain sound effects here and there too. So, as a result, I'm very, very, very impressed with how this remake plays out to be, and I think you should probably give it this game a chance, be able to actually give this remake a try, especially considering how the fact that, well, it's actually a lot more fun to play, especially considering, despite it's pretty short though, it probably took you about roughly or so 20 or so minutes to complete, but as a result though, everything else has been restored in peace to dreamland, and also every single food has now been given to everyone, and all swell that ends well, right? Well, it turns out that, as you can see on this message, it did say, Extra game is not available yet, but you can press right when selecting new game on the title screen to play a special mini game. So yeah, unlike the original version of the game, where basically you get yourselves the extra game, where the only difference is between the normal game and the extra game, is that uh, the enemies can get a lot more aggressive, alongside with the bosses also getting aggressive as well, make things a lot more harder than the forms of how it does it on normal mode. In here though, all you really get is just... Wait a minute. Don't tell me this is... Flappy Flapper? Uh, is it something tells me this is like... Oh my god, it's Flappy Bird! Oh wait, you're able to take control of the bat instead of the bird. So basically, that's the rewards you can get if you complete the game on normal mode or the normal regular game. And all you're really getting is just a Kirby skin version of, well, Flappy Bird. That's all there is to it. That's, uh, unexpected for sure. Mind you, I have tried Flappy Bird, and let me tell you, I suck at Flappy Bird. Like, I couldn't get the timing working, and on top of that, it is dang impossible to able to get something rewarding in Flappy Bird. Like, well, obviously you go for pipes in Flappy Bird, but in here, you go for those series of blocks, and that's pretty much about it. So, I think we should probably uh, end things off as soon as I get distracted by playing 
Floppy Flopper, which is essentially Floppy Bird, Kirby Edition, but that's besides the point. So I hope you guys do enjoy this short Let's Play of any sorts. This is me, Tiana, from the likes of the Maxi Toys, and as I promise you guys, until tomorrow, I will be back in WarriorWare Touched, and hopefully, we'll finish up this game and during that time, and exponentially, we'll move on to the other parts and stuff like that. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and, uh, yeah, not much else I can say. Bye.